Hi everyone, it's Kate Byers and I wanted to jump in and record an episode for you guys today about a question I hear a lot. Really, really common is do you Hi everyone, it's Kate Byers. Oops, I got some back speed. Hold on just a second. Record an episode for you guys today about a question I hear a lot. Really, I got to really turn down my volume here. Hold on a minute. There we go. Okay. Um, is do you have to step down from your career in order to prioritize your family? I get this a lot because we work with highly successful women who have very demanding jobs and you know quite frankly they're worried they're like i love my career a lot of them are breadwinners um, a lot of them have to have the salary you know to support their family but yet they're constantly feeling like how am i ever going to find time for my kids how am i ever going to find time for myself for my health you know my husband feels ignored and all these things that we women have to juggle right okay so let's get in and bust some myths and kind of talk about that and um you know because if what happens is I think as women, and it's so funny, I was talking to a woman the other day and she's like, am I doing the right thing? Isn't that something I think we ask a lot? Like, should I step down? Should I make a little bit less money? Should I step back from my career? Will I lose my place in line? Right? There's this sense of feeling like you're really trapped. But at the same time, we've got these beautiful kids at home. You know, we've, we've created this family. We have this amazing husband. Or maybe you're not, maybe you're single and you're like, wow, I am giving my whole life to a firm. And, you know, I, I, I'm not even getting, you know, meeting people that I want to meet. I'm not even married or, you know, I don't have a partner because I don't have time. And that's one of the first myths that I want to, to really bust. And we're going to talk more about that. And I'm going to start jumping in and doing a lot more episodes to help you guys understand what, you know, what really works and what doesn't. And the biggest thing is time. So, the reason we would step down from our, our position, uh, whatever position you're in, however, however high up the ladder you are, the reason you would step back is the thought is I'll have more time because there'll be less demands on my time. Less demanding job equals more time. And what we found is that that doesn't happen, right? So in, except for in very, very rare instances, you know, if you're if you're trying to be an astronaut, there's probably a certain amount of time you're going to have to give to the training of being an astronaut. But most of us are trying not, not trying to be astronauts. We're just trying to do our job in the business world. And it's really not about more time. It's really about creating a environment where you are balancing your needs. And I'm going to talk about that more in a minute. But the first thing I want you to understand is it's not about time. Most of not all of the women who work with us, they are working in environments that a lot of times demand 70, 80 hours from their teams, from their staff. They're working in extremely high profile jobs with clients who can call them at the drop of a hat or the C-suite that's going to call them at the drop of the hat. They may and, and you know feel like they need to respond. Uh, they may be in the C-suite and feel like, wow, I've worked so hard to get this place at the table. Now I've got to really earn it and, and stay here. Um, and women who are just in like very, you know, stressful um, jobs and roles where it's like, no, there's nobody else in the company who does this but me. I'm, I'm like, you know, the buck stops with me type of thing, very niche type of expertise. And so all of these things drive this mindset of I'm in a position that really requires my constant attention or a very high level of my attention. And therefore, my family is coming second to that. And even though we would never, never say that out loud, or we would never intentionally probably um, want to admit that, that's what happens a lot. I know in my career, the first 12 years was I was working my way up the ladder. I always said that my daughter was the priority, but the reality was she wasn't. My career was the priority, always, right? If the company needed me, I went. The company asked me to jump, I jumped. And it wasn't that I was a yes man. I mean, I was known as someone who was visionary, who was strategic, who brought up ideas, who bucked the status quo, who challenged my bosses. I mean, I was not a yes man. But at the end of the day, that's kind of where my focus always went. And my daughter knew that, guys. And, and your family will suffer, you know. To think that my daughter didn't suffer and that our relationship now could have been different is the reality. My relationship with my daughter could be very different if I had taught her that she was my priority and that I was willing to put work aside. And I never did that. Okay. So the, the result of our action is, is, is regret. It absolutely is regret. Okay. So I want to, that to be very clear and I'm not trying to be like doom and gloom and all of that, but we see this over and over again with the women we work with, the, the children just start sort of disassociating themselves 
or create space between themselves and their parent because as they grow older and they become you know teens and then leave for college and then go out into the world on their own what they've learned is that you know at the end of the day I'm second, I'm secondary. And so they're gonna start treating you as secondary when the tables turn and you're now begging them, please call me. And they're like, oh no, I've got college, I'm busy. And it's not even like conscious guys. It just, it starts happening, right? It's an unconscious mindset that we've taught our children, which is the things that are really precious in life actually need to be set aside because we have to be over here and be successful. And it's this really crazy thing that just goes on inside all of us because of our culture and environment. So back to stepping back. So the first thing is it's not about creating more time and it's not about creating less stress. So the other myth is like, well, if I'm not, um, you know, at the whatever, at whatever level in my company, then I'll have less stress. But again, what we have found, like a lot of the women we work with, they have flexible jobs. They can work from home. Their companies and their bosses are telling them, take time off. You work way too hard. You're too hard on yourself. Like the companies are actually telling them, we're afraid you're gonna burn out if you don't change your behavior. A lot of the companies that um, my clients work for have flexible schedule. You could take off in the middle of the day and go play with your kids. And yet we don't do it. So I want you to understand that this is not an issue of what you do for your career. It's an issue of how you navigate your career. And that really comes from up here, what your belief system is about what it takes to have a successful career. And then also truly some strategies and positioning yourself and how you speak and how you do your work and how you interact in your career differently. So it's kind of a two-step, we always call it, we say it's the science and the strategy of creating a balanced life. The science is behavioral science. It's learning to rewire what's up here. Because if you believe in order to keep your place at the table, in order to be a vice president, in order to be in the C-suite, in order to be um, the person who gets the most prominent projects, whatever it is that you do, that you do really well, that you love, if you believe that in order to do that role and do it well, that you have to work really hard and sacrifice, because that's what we've been taught, then you will always work hard and sacrifice. And so your only other option is to leave that world and go to some other world, right? And so, and that's a belief. That is simply a belief. And so many of our clients, you know, they're like, but Kate, are you telling me I should do like cruddy work? And just like not care and I'm like no <laughs> I'm saying that you're tremendously valuable in whatever role you're in and you don't need to keep proving it to people the only person who doesn't think you're a value is you right so it's not about stepping back from one role to the next it's learning how to navigate in a different environment that yes there may be more demands there may be a different level of expectation but notice I did not use the word stress did I stress is a choice Okay, so you may have different demands and expectations on you for your performance and the results, but that doesn't mean it has to be stressful. The stress is self-induced, guys. It is always self-induced. And we work with women. There's one woman we work with right now. She's amazing. The day after she enrolled um, with us, she's like, hey, I got to quit my job. I just have to quit my job. They don't care about anyone. The culture is ridiculous. They just keep dumping more stuff on me. I keep asking for more and more time and saying like, look, this is ridiculous. And they just don't care. And I'm like, all right, we got gotcha. you. <laughs> she goes, but I love my job. I love what I do. And I'm like, I know. She goes, but I'm not seeing my family. My health is suffering. You know, when I do see my kids, it's just sort of like, uh, I've always got my bag of, you know, the computer with me or my papers or whatever is always with me. And, and that's not really quality of life. Like that's not balance. You know, when we're with our kids, but we're sort of like doing this the whole time and like looking at our notepad or, you know, typing away on our phone, we're not with our kids. We're not building memories. We're not savoring a beautifully balanced life. We're just sort of getting through the motions of life. And that's what happens is when we're going to look back, you know, in, in five years, 10 years, 15 years and go, my God, what have I done? My life has slipped through my fingers. I don't remember my children growing up. My husband sleeps next to me, but I don't remember the last time we really like hung out and, you know, had an amazing time together or we do, but it's always perfunctory. It's like the vacation time. Right. And so if that's not what we're talking about. A balanced life isn't just getting a bunch of stuff done. It's about having those precious memories and that quality of life that's calm and connected. 
So anyways, back to my client. And so what we've started doing was helping her realize how she was taking on so much work and so much responsibility for her work and using so much headspace for her work that she didn't need to be doing. She was putting in way too much energy and way too much of herself into her work was step one. Two, we helped empower her with language that helped her say yes but also create space to live the life she wanted. So it's like, yeah, I'll be happy to do that project for you. Yes, I'll be happy to take that on. But we call them win-win strategies, right? So you have to learn that not only do you have needs you're trying to balance, so is the other person across the room. And what we really focus on in our communication is helping them meet their needs and you get your needs met. And so we started showing her how to create these win-win strategies in the office. And also really focusing on what her values are. Like if you know what your values are, if you know what is really most precious to you, it's easier for you to know if you're stepping across the line and say, ooh, maybe I need to come back over here. I'm stretching myself way too far out of the zone of where I want to be. I'm starting to make sacrifices. And guys, in your human um, psychology, when you start making sacrifices, you will start feeling guilty every single time. And we use this in our communication. Like we say like, oh, you must sacrifice for the firm. You must sacrifice for your baseball team. You must make sacrifices to build a beautiful life. That word is the wrong word. If you're sacrificing, you are going to feel miserable. But if you're living congruently with what you value, you can make compromises and you'll feel fine. You'll be like, yep, I'm willing to compromise that for that. That's a good trade. I'm good with that. Right? So a compromise is different than a sacrifice. And I can do a whole nother episode on that to kind of illustrate that for you. But I wanna go back again to stepping back. So what we see from women is when they step back in order to create balance, you can step back for a lot of reasons, but if you're just trying to do it to get more time or, or you know, avoid burning out or have more time with your family, what happens is, is it doesn't work. Because what happens is the rest of life just fills in the cracks and crevices of what you just gave up. And we've seen this over and over again with clients who have stepped down from, you know, VP to director, from director to manager, from C-suite to individual contributor, you know, leadership roles to individual contributor roles. And what's happening is they're actually giving up something that's very precious to them for something else that they think is should be more precious. But what happens is now we're still not spending the quality time with our kids. Like this happens a lot with them. We had one client who moved her house closer to work. So she goes, wow, my commute just went from like 45 minutes to 15. Well, guess what happened in that extra 30 minutes? Did she give that back to her family? No. She used it to stop and get errands on the way home. She stopped and get groceries on the way home. She used it to make phone calls. Um, she used it to stay a little bit later at the office. So it's up here, guys, right? This is what we have to fix. It's not about time and stepping back. It is about understanding what you believe you have to do to be successful at work and understanding how to really be successful at work without constantly in this frenetic, I have to work, I have to work, I have to be, I have to be, I have to do, I have to do. Okay. That's not what it's about ever, ever, ever. And so what happens if you step back, now you're resentful. And we've worked with a lot of women too, who are like, well, I've stepped back. I gave up my career for 18 years. And now here I am feeling unfulfilled because I could have been, I should have been, I had the capacity to be, I never role modeled for my kids what was possible. Or, you know, here I am at age, whatever, 40 or 50, and I'm starting at the bottom of the pack. That's not building a beautifully balanced life either. That's you living with resentment. And a lot of times that resentment will come out with your family or with your partner, because the feeling is, look, I gave up my career so we can have a happy family. So why aren't you guys happy? Right. And so now we're putting this like pressure, this expectation on our family or our partners or ourselves to have, you know, more of these other things, because look what I gave up. And that's not going to be, a, again, it's a sacrifice. It's not a compromise. It's a sacrifice. And so that is why we believe so strongly what we teach women how to do is have a successful career, have your successful career. You can have your cake and eat it too. You just have to learn how to navigate your career differently. But before you can even see or understand how to do that, you have to change your psychology. And that's why the majority of what we do up front is we help women change the psychology. And once you change the psychology, the beliefs you have around your career, around having it all, around being a parent, about being, around being a wife, when that changes, it opens up the store of possibility. And now you're like, great, 
um, I'm going to have this amazing career. There's going to be sometimes when I work a lot. There's going to be sometimes when I don't. There's going to be sometimes when I mother a lot and sometimes when I don't. There's going to be sometimes when I'm not working a lot, I'm not mothering a lot, and I'm being a wife a lot or I'm at the gym or whatever it is. And so what we want to strive for is fluidity. Does that make sense? Like you don't want to be just um, uh, very rigid. You know, I've got to do this and this and this and this. And for anyone who's watched some of my presentations before, you know, what we teach you is that you have seven universal needs. You want to just be flowing in and out of those needs. Sometimes you need a little bit more help. Sometimes you need a little bit more mommy time. Sometimes you need to be more committed as a wife and more involved with your spouse. Other times you need to step up at work. But when you understand how to do that, there's no guilt. There's no anxiety. There's no burnout. There's no running around trying to create space and time. It's just very apparent to you what you need to do and when and how to communicate that to whoever is in your environment, whether it's your three-year-old, your 50-year-old husband, your three-year-old child, your the C-suite, whoever it is that you are working with, you will understand very clearly how to help them get their needs met while you're getting your needs met, everybody's winning, and you have this fluid, balanced, beautiful life. So if you are considering stepping down, I would ask you to think about what's truly important to you, not what society's telling is important to you, not that the guilt that's tugging at you, but say, honestly, I really like my career and I like the position that I'm in. I've worked, you know, my whole life to get to this level and do this work. It's interesting for me. It's creative. It's fulfilling. But I do feel like it's overtaking my personal life. And if that's what happening, if that's what's happening and you want to keep that career but still have a personal life that's full of memories, precious moments, calm connections with family and friends and the things that's precious to you, then you need to book a call with me and we'll talk about whether or not our program is a fit and you're a fit for us because that is entirely possible. But you've got to make the psychological shifts and then you've got to learn the strategic things that you need to do in the office so that everyone's having a win-win. And we have plenty of clients who are doing this right now that are in this group that you could, you know, I'm sure their stories and stuff are being shared that you could ask questions to, but that's really what a balanced life is about. And I always like kind of laugh. I'm like, it's not about crock pots or all pairs or nannies. Those are great tools. Like, believe me, I love coming home to a crock pot meal because I don't have to cook. And I love having, you know, extra help around the house, a housekeeper, a nanny, all those things are great. But what we see again over and over again is that's not really what it's about, right? It's really about you learning how to have a very powerful career without allowing it to overtake your life, going into work very calmly and confidently doing what you need to do, but also very calmly and confidently checking out of work when you need to and knowing how to balance that without the guilt and without the anxiety. And when you start doing that, all of that emotional baggage just melts away because there's no space for it anymore in your life. You are in control and you're living congruently with what you want. So um, I hope this has been helpful to you guys. If it has, leave a comment or leave a question, um, you know, put a like in there or something so I know that you guys are watching this and um, this provides some value. And I will start trying to do these more often so I can be in here once or twice a week to help everybody on their journey. And I hope you guys have a blessed day.